Hi, this is Paul Neal at Penn Productions. Uh, I was just working on a game model that I designed uh, some time ago and wanted to complete. And uh, so I start, was building the, uh, you know, this, this really cool looking shield. And it's all tied together with ties that you can see all the way around. And those were going to become very, you know, problematic to try and add all of these. So I wanted a fast way of going about doing it. And what I discovered is there's a really nice way of doing it with conform, but it can't really be done directly. And I'll explain why. Let's let's do this corner here. So if I were to take a circle, for instance, or just about any 3D shape and whatnot, and uh, you know move that into place, and we'll just rotate that in, and we'll try and you know conform this onto the uh, surface. Uh, let's say. So with it, you know, I can go and turn on renderable, for instance, and, you know, I've used the rectangle settings here. And if I want to conform that and add these objects to conform to, I can go and use shrink wrap. And shrink wrap is going to uh, conform around the vertex normal to start with, which you notice is only doing part of it. Um, you know, that's not going to work because it doesn't have vertex normals in the vertices of the spline. Because even though this is, looks like geometry now, it's only conforming the spline. So, uh, you know, I can change this to closest point and it'll start to work. Um, but what you're going to find is it's just going to jump all over the place and really not allow you the kind of control um, to, to be able to do this. So what we need is some sort of collision object that we're not colliding with these. We're going to be colliding with something that, you know, kind of represents their overall shape. And the way we're going to do that is into uh, uh, create a geosphere. Now, a geosphere is going to be a better solution than using a regular sphere because a geosphere, ge being geodesic, has a much more even distribution of polygons in it. So I'm going to place that at that junction here. And I'm going to use a conform modifier on it now. And I'm going to pick all three of these and add them to it. And again, instead of volume, I'm going to use shrink wrap and I'm going to use closest point for these. So then it actually wraps them around it all. So we want to even this out. So a relax modifier can be added and I'll just take that up and maybe we can just do it a couple of times on there and I'll make it see through with alt X. So there you go. We've got something we can collide to. You know, it doesn't fit it perfectly, um, but it's going to fit it pretty good. And it's going to be based on the radius of our sphere as to how tight it gets into the corners and whatnot. We can add a little bit of offset if we feel we need it, you know, to, to be able to offset this. Find it's not actually the best to do it on the geosphere at this point, but you could. You could try that. You could try some of the other settings, but this is working pretty good. So now we're going to go back and we're going to make that circle again. This time we don't want it rendering at all. I'm just going to line it up to the uh, to the geosphere and we'll just rotate it into place. And I'll make it much larger than what we're uh, needing at this point. And I'll pull it out like this. So the problem still remains if we... Um, uh, you know, uh, conform the spline, we're not going to be able to control the shape after uh, very well. So what we want to do is we want to use a sweep modifier on this and create a shape. The problem with this is that if we try and do it this way, the conform modifier uh, is creating, you know, um, three-dimensional geometry. And so you'll see what happens when I add the conform modifier and we say, pick the surface, and we go and do shrink wrap, you know, it's not going to work with the vertex normals on there. And then if we go and do closest point, it's going to make quite a mess of it. It's going to be all over the place for us. So once again, this doesn't work very well. And it doesn't work very well because we're dealing with three-dimensional geometry. We kind of want to just deal with a flat surface and be able to project it. So I'm just going to turn the grid on and I'm going to go to my grid and snap set, uh, settings with uh, shift uh, right, uh, and right click or you can just right click on your uh, snap settings up here. Make sure it's on grid points. Turn on snap with S and right, um, control right click and we're going to make a line 
and I'm going to make it between two of the grid points. And what on the keyboard to get into the sub object? Control A to select them all. I'm going to make sure that they're all on corner. Okay. And then I'm going to scale it and I'm going to scale it around a common center, um, you know, with these. And that'll need to be done in view, sorry. And I'll just make it the width of the little piece of leather that we're going to be using. Now we're also going to turn off optimize, which is stopping the ability to have steps in between. And I want to set the steps down really low, down to one. And you'll see why in a second as we create that. So out of the sub object, back into our suite modifier. And this time I'm going to say use custom. And I'm going to select that little one. So we've got the one extra edge loop down the middle because of the interpolation is set to one and optimize has been turned off and it's a, because it's a straight line. So now let's go back to our conform. We can change our uh, conform now with shrink wrap closest point to vertex normal and it'll be able to project down along the vertex normals uh, as opposed to what we were getting before. A little bit of offset. You can see it's much cleaner results so far. And then a shell modifier on top to be able to give it that little bit of thickness that we're looking for. Now you can also see it starts getting a little you know, wonky in places. So we're going to relax it, but don't relax the 3D geometry. Relax that flat plane that we have around there and we'll get a cleaner result again. And we'll just take the relax amount up, you know, iterations maybe one and you can see we're getting a pretty good result here so the only thing you really need to concern yourself with is that the radius of the circle is outside the uh, the object we're trying to conform to and again we can go and play with that conform you know amount or sorry the offset amount if we want to be able to set it off the surface a little bit more and we could even just you know eventually collapse it and be able to control how this is working and the location of the sphere and the size of the sphere is going to change the end result and what you're going to get from this. Now all you need to do to be able to continue creating these is to copy them because it's already set up. I'm just going to copy that out and say, OK, you can see it stuck itself to the next one, but it's going through the original. So in the conform modifier, let's just add that one in and it will now be stepping over it as well. So we can just simply keep copying these and just keep adding the previous one to the list um, so that it is pulling tight over top of it and then just doing some adjustments to it to try and get it to look like it's fitting in the right place and not colliding too much with other geometry. We could fix it again later. We could collapse these down uh, and then, you know, do some pushing and pull pulling or either uh, with a, uh, you know, an edit poly modifier on top or just convert it down to an edible poly. But now you've got the ability to be able to add those at will really easily and they can look really good. The geospheres um, will eventually get deleted from the scene once we collapse them down if we really want to. In this case, I set all of these to... Um, non-rendering in case I'm going to be rendering it uh, so that we don't see them in the render if I'm doing render tests and this is something that's not going out to a real-time engine. There you go. Hope that uh, was kind of cool and a neat way of putting uh, ties and wraps around things.